Transphobia must be opposed, but misogyny too must be challenged. Gender identity does not cancel out sex. Women's oppression by men has a physical basis, and to deny the relevance of biology when considering sexual inequality is a mistake. The struggle for women's empowerment is ongoing. Reproductive freedoms are under threat, and the Me Too campaign faces a backlash. Women's concerns about sharing dormitories or changing rooms with male-bodied people must be taken seriously. These are not just questions of safety, but of dignity and fairness. This is Sean. Now, he's a YouTuber who I subscribe to because he's kind of a liberal guy. You might even describe him as a libtard. But the reason why I subscribe to him is because when I discovered him, he was debating racists and bigots. And I really appreciated that and him giving his opinion and format against them. But in another clear case of the left eating itself, Sean is debating with The Guardian, well, the UK version of The Guardian, on what trans people are and how women have the right not to have a man dress up in a wig with bold muscles bulging out of his arms and maybe he's a sexual predator maybe he wants to look at them how women have the right to protect themselves from this particular man because there are predators who do that but with regards to the argument that cis women's concerns about sharing spaces with trans women must be taken seriously one possible line of response does immediately jump to mind and that's historical comparison Consider an article that, discussing desegregation, say, made the case that white people's concerns about sharing spaces with black people must be taken seriously. Or responding to a gay rights issue with straight people's concerns about sharing spaces with gay people must be taken seriously. Sean, I don't know if you know this, but my black skin is not some type of dress that you have to put on on a daily basis or something that you have to rub on your lips or get a nice skin tone that matches your skin texture or whatever. Nobody is born with high heels and a wig on at birth. A person is born black and cannot change at all their blackness, unlike a person who decides to dress up as a woman for their kinky habit. And maybe in a world where you can just change your skin tone at will, maybe you can look at a person who just automatically turns from, let's say, a dark-haired Asian person to a full black tone man in the middle of the night maybe you can look at them with some suspect but until then nobody can change what they are and uh, stop comparing racism to common sense concern with your six-year-old going in the same bathroom as a six-foot man with a blonde wig on i mean come on who could have had a i don't know a case of child abuse i don't know and about the whole argument about the whole sharing a bathroom with gay people thing, I have never seen a bathroom that says straight or heteros only. I mean, maybe it would be a cool idea, but here's the thing. Have you ever heard of the term don't drop the soap? It's pretty much because of the gay community in jail that that uh, phrase happens. So, hey. Now, to understand the conversation surrounding The Guardian's concerns about gendered spaces, however, and to avoid getting lost somewhere later and having to double back, hey, we're going to have to start out with some basic concepts here. And so we'll begin by asking a simple question. Uh, what makes someone a particular gender? And there's a lot of bad answers to this question, uh, so let's take a look at some of those. And first up is the most basic and crude of answers. What bits they've got. That's right, if you've got a penis and testicles, you're a man. If you've got a vagina and ovaries, you're a woman. So that's a direct one-to-one -one sex and gender correlation there. Nothing could be simpler than that, right? Now, my response to this genital-based answer is twofold. Uh, firstly, it isn't particularly helpful. Uh, speaking for myself here, but genitals tend not to come into play in the majority of my interactions with other people day-to-day. 
if you can believe such a thing. Uh, I don't know what kind of lives you're all leading, of course, but I'm personally not peeking down people's trousers to confirm what they've got in there. It's an inconsequential, unknown quantity, the vast majority of the time anyway, and thus not much use to us. The other problem with this answer, in addition to it being unhelpful, is that it isn't actually true. That's because what you did there is a straw man. There's more to gender than just your genitals. For instance, men have XY chromosome, while women have XX chromosome. Men tend to have differing skeletons than a woman. I mean, have you ever seen a woman in male skeleton? Men tend to be taller. Men have larger heads, which is larger brains. Men have larger shoulders. Men have a build like a man. Now, a woman have a more hourglass figure because her pelvis is larger because that's where she pushes out babies. Plus, her chest is much bigger. You're telling me that a double D size woman, you cannot tell the difference from a man? I mean, come on. I know you're not looking down at genitals, but the physical build of a woman, you need to, I mean, you have to, you have to know this by now, what a woman is physically built like. Women are generally shorter, have longer hair. Now that's a cultural thing, but it's also a biological too. Women tend to have much more shapely bodies since their pelvis is larger. They have an hourglass figure where they have a lot of junk in the trunk. I mean, you have to notice this as a and man. And he says he's heterosexual and cisgender, so it's not like he's saying he's bi or whatever he says that he's straight so i'm just interested if somebody showed up on a date who says that they were a woman but they have a full beard a adam's apple out like a whole bunch of hair under their i would say arms and stuff like that you wouldn't be a little bit curious i, I mean you would know that this would be like a man right I mean, and let's say the person who you met have like a very flat chest, kind of like a man. I mean, come on. Uh, before we even talk about trans people or questions of self-identification, conflating gender with genitalia in an exclusively binary way simply doesn't work. And let's do a thought experiment here. Now, I personally have a penis. Let's assume I have a penis. Say I'm out and about one day and get into some sort of unfortunate situation and it comes off. You know, a car accident, say, or some sort of misjudged boast. So now I've no longer got a penis, or testicles even, let's say. But that doesn't change my gender, does it? I'd still be a man, you know. We wouldn't all start calling me she because of that, would we? I'd still identify as and present as a man. I wouldn't have grown ovaries or something. You know, you hopefully see my point here. I guess his trans friends didn't lead a good example for him, you know, just to asking. I mean, he says he has, like, um, trans friends and stuff like that. I guess the, it didn't leave a good example for his lifestyle. But yes, losing your penis does not make you less of a man or stop you from being a man. The same as losing your breast to breast cancer or losing your ovaries to ovary cancer makes you less of a woman. I get your point, but still, that doesn't prove that trans people are actual gender. And does anybody find it funny that the Guardian, he accused the Guardian of transphobia, even though they were trying to look out for women and not get women attacked or assaulted by some creeps, but he compares trans people to an accident or some type of mistake. I think they're making a mistake or some type of accident. That's why their suicides rates are so high, in my personal opinion, but I just wanted to point that out. Oh, someone might say in response, I acknowledge that what genitals someone has currently doesn't actually determine their gender, but what if we say it's what genitals someone was born with that determines your gender? Gender is still tied to genitals, just not necessarily your current genitals, you see. This is the worrisome definition that we saw the US Guardian staff be rightfully concerned about earlier. 
Now, this argument shares a problem with the previous one. So, rewatch the video, I guess. It's still, still a straw man, I like to point out. Another problem with this argument is that it completely ignores the experience of intersex people. Not everyone is born with sexual characteristics that neatly fall into one of two camps. There are some people born with ambiguous genitalia. There are people with both testicular and ovarian tissue. And on a genetic level, there are female people with chromosomes normally associated with being male, and vice versa. And the no socks, no shoes, no service signs are biased towards nudist people. I mean, you have people um, walking around, well, at least men walking around with their shirts off. Why don't they have the full right to be nude? Why don't they have their pants off and also uh, underwear off too? I mean, there's exceptions to the rules, but there are no rules for exceptions in this world. You can't serve all minorities. The response to mentioning intersex people is usually dismissive. You know, well, there aren't many of those people, are there? Uh, which is wrong for a start, because there's actually a lot more intersex people than you might expect. There's that fun statistic that estimates intersex people are about as common as people with red hair. Well, show me the intersex version of Ireland, and then we can talk. Uh, regardless, though, it wouldn't matter if there was just one intersex person on the planet, it'd still be a valid way of being a person. Ignoring intersex people or trying to downplay their existence is, in our case, a way to enforce a binary system where one does not apply. One of the things I hate about my generation is that people feel that um, to validate you as a person, people must serve your individual uniqueness and circumstance. Like, I'm left-handed, and I never had a left-handed desk in school, nor would I ever ask for one, because I know it would probably be expensive, but still, I am a real and justified person with my own individual um, right to live. I don't need a left-handed desk to feel better. And I find it a little bit strange that he's saying one person would justify, like, banning or just, I don't know, just stopping just gendered bathrooms. That's like the equivalent of me saying somebody could have a seizure by flashing lights, so we must ban all fireworks and shit like that. I mean, it's just utterly stupid. Also, even if there were a practical way to use what genitals someone was born with to determine which gendered restroom they should go into today, efforts to enforce this rule would quickly lead to situations like the following. So this chap here is Michael Hughes, a trans man from Minnesota. Now, in response to so-called bathroom bills designed to force people to only use facilities that match their assigned gender at birth, Michael Hughes posted a series of photographs of himself looking very out of place in the women's toilets. Now, this is ridiculous, clearly. Legislation designed to allay bigoted fears about, quote, men going into the ladies' toilets would lead to this guy having to go into the ladies' toilets. Because if he went into the men's, he could be arrested. I wonder why he didn't say if he... Um, went into the male urinal. You know why? Because he, who is really a she, cannot use the urinal because only men can really pee straight. Because women have, you know, vages, vaginas. They can't really aim and then piss. So that person, he would still have to use the bathroom of a female because biologically it is a female. No matter how much roids you put in him, he is still a female, FYI. So that's what I'm saying. There can be facilities in women's restrooms, say places to dispose of menstrual products or an adequate number of doored stalls for people who can't urinate standing up, uh, that often don't exist in the men's bathrooms. Women aren't the only people to menstruate, but... Women are literally the only people in the world that can menstruate, and men are the only people who can pee straight. Get it? Pee straight, menstruate. That's the difference.